What's up, y'all? It's Graham back again for more of Preston in Curtain Call, Arkham Horror LCG. Uh, this is a Dark Horse Preston deck that I've been playing around with. Uh, I kind of just wanted to see like what was life with him. Um, actually, you know what? You can't really see here. Let me uh, slide this screen over here. Um, yeah, I've uh, I got seven. Seven experience? Yes, I got seven experience in Curtain Call. Um, and I think I misspoke. I'm going to play The Last King today. Uh, so I've added uh, Streetwise, um, which is a cool permanent that lets me burn more money, uh, which I already have a ton of because I'm Preston. I also got Sharn's Oval because I like to live dangerously, and I'm a super fan of experience. So... Um, yeah, otherwise the deck operates the same way that it did before. Uh, Dig Deep is there for treacheries. Um, Dark Horse makes me a cool 2-2-2-2, two, 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 but I think it actually comes into play more often than you might expect. The draw on this deck seems to be okay, so I only have one fine close in here right now. Um, and Desperate Search is there as like a, a sort of a tech card for the man in the Pallid Mask. Um and uh, truthfully, dumb luck, I kind of threw in here just to see if it was useful or not. I doubt it's going to come into play, but, you know, eh, you never know. Uh, so we're going to dive on in uh, to this adventure here. Let me switch it back over to the game screen. Um, here's my boy. My boy Preston. What's up, my dog? What's up? Um, I started with one uh horror, sorry, um, because of, uh, oh gosh, what is it? His weakness. His weakness gives you a mental trauma if you don't deal with it, and I did not deal with it, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to deal with it this time, so hooray for us. Anyway, we're playing The Last King, and uh, this is the one where you're at the dinner party and you got all kinds of guests. I'm not going to dig too deep into the like flavor text and stuff I'll kind of just give you a once over so that you remember what happens in the plot I remember there's a sickening reality deck here um, that we're going to shuffle up uh, every time that we draw from it uh, that those get drawn after agenda 2 or when agenda 2 is about to advance and then it actually doesn't fully advance so we're going to make our way through the sickening reality deck um, the token bag is up here uh, skulls are redraw for this, uh, which could possibly place Doom if there's lunatics in play. And then I drew poorly uh, last time, and I got the tablets. So there's three minus fours in the bag, which I don't think most standard decks with a handful of XP are really set to handle. But uh, here we are, you know? Uh, all right, so my strategy here is to um, do one of two things. One is try to get poor so that I'm set up with a fire axe so I can handle the first couple ways of enemies. I'm expecting um, a corrosion to come along and wipe out my fire axes. So the last part of the scenario, we're just going to be evading everybody and trying to pick up a bunch of clues. That said, if we get Jordan Perry, uh, let me see if I can pull him out real quick. Um, Jordan Perry is the one that uh, you have to have a bunch of resources in order to parlay. If he starts in one of these locations that's only one space away, I'm going to maybe try to risk it and just go up to like 12 resources by the end of my first turn and then try to pick up his two clues the second turn and hope that I don't draw any enemies the first two turns. That's, that's my gamble. I'm doing it because I think Preston should be good, in theory, at parlaying this guy. Um, even though it's Dark Horse Preston, which is like maybe not ideal for this. Uh, and I've also actually never successfully parlayed him. Uh, so I'm really interested in getting his objective, I guess. Um, so uh, let's shuffle this up. And I'm going to just shuffle this up a bunch of times. When I stop shuffling, I'm going to put the person on top uh, here. Um, hold on, how do I... There's a way that I can ping this and I can't remember how to do it um, I think it's tab maybe um, yeah that's right so I'm going to put the first person there um, 
And then second person will go to the dining room, three, four, and then five is the gallery. So that's just the the order once I'm done shuffling. Let's go ahead and do that. Wait, how do I? There you go. Now we're shuffling. Stop. All right, Sebastian goes up to the top. Ashley's in the corner. Constance, uh, Ishimaru, and then Jordan Perry ends up in the gallery. But Jordan Perry is always in the back row. That's the deal. Uh, that's just how this game works. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, I start in the foyer. Uh, there's a resign option here. It starts with two clues, which would be good to get, but I try to leave them until the end. Um, I also might get like a look what I found, and I can maybe hold on to that uh, and burn it on that one on my way out the door. So that's my plan. Uh, out of these first three up front, we've got a willpower test, which I'm pretty bad at unless I have dig deep in play. I've got an intellect test, which I'm better because I start with streetwise, and I've got another willpower test, um, which again I'm bad at without dig deep. Uh, also, I got a copy of Fine Clothes in here, so that's going to make, you know, tests like Ishimaru, in particular, very easy um, because that will reduce the difficulty from two to zero. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and draw an opening hand here. We're going to shuffle this guy up. And see what I get. Uh, all right, man of the pallid man, get out of here. Uh, opening hand is a bunch of skill cards and a look what I found, and I don't want any of it. I could maybe keep the perception, um, or like one of the rise to the occasions, like that's fine. But I'm really just looking for my key assets, so I'm actually gonna hard mull again, all five of these, um, and we're gonna. I'm going to draw a fresh five. Um, and oh, I got fine clothes and I got the fire axe. And that is just swell, I think. Um, I also got a perception, uh, which is good. And the cherish keepsake could come in handy. Uh, I might try to throw it down early because it's probably going to get wiped out by a corrosion. I looked at my deck and I have basically no items. And all the shrouds in the scenario are like four. And then there's a five. Uh, so, yeah, corrosion just wipes my board, basically. And we're just going to see how well we do. Uh, ideally, I would get... Let's see. Um, ideally, I, I have 2 XP to spend. I would love to get 6 for Lola. So, ideally, I would get 4 XP, which would be 8... Um, oops. Uh, that would be 8 clues. And I think that's going to be pretty challenging to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, throw down, um, let's see here, who am I going to go after first? Um, I don't have a way to boost willpower, so I think I'm going to throw down the fire axe, move in with Constance. If I spawn with an enemy, then i got to try to kill the enemy, um, otherwise I can throw down fine clothes maybe, and... Uh, Try to get all of our clues. We'll see what happens, all right? Let us begin as soon as I find my player board. There it is. All right. Um, let's do this. First action, we're going to throw down a fire axe with uh, one resource from family inheritance. Um, second action, we're going to move to the courtyard. After you enter the courtyard, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card's an enemy, draw it. Um, I guess while I'm up here, I'm going to read the agenda deck and act deck because I kind of skipped those agenda one fashionably late as you pull up to the manor you hear some bumping beats but that's weird because it's the 20s has the madness of the king in yellow already made its way here uh, act 1a discovering the truth this isn't a party it's a mad party whoa killer party bro maybe you can talk about the king in yellow um, objective find as many clues as you can and then get out of this awful place don't have to tell me twice Right, I gotta discard the top card of the encounter deck, shuffle that guy up, and if it is an enemy, I draw it. It's not, it's a corrosion, that feels great. Uh, I'm always down for getting rid of corrosions, because that's the one thing that really messes me up in this scenario. <laughs> There's a lot of things that really mess you up, but unfortunately these are going to get shuffled back into the encounter deck, I think, in a couple rounds, but you know what, here we are. Everything's great. Um, all right, so last action, I'm going to play um, 
either the keepsake or the fine clothes, I guess. Um, my next turn, well, if I do fine clothes now, my next turn could be clue, clue, move down to Ishimaru. Yeah, I'll try that. Uh, I'm going to keep the cherish keepsake in hand because Ishimaru needs um, six cards in hand. So maybe I'll hold on to that for the hand fodder. All right, and the last action, there's my fine clothes. So there's no enemies. End of the round, I draw a card. I gain a resource, dig deep. I love seeing that. Very cool. Um, top of the round, uh, we go up to one doom, and I draw ancient evils. And it's going to be two doom. How much fun is that? Just when you thought that you had more time to do the things that you're supposed to do. All right, first action. We're going to try to uh, parlay Constance. Her difficulty is reduced to one because of my cool, cool thing, my fine clothes. Um, so right now I'm a one on one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nothing in my play area affecting that. I do have a perception, which I would love to use on one of these. Uh, and let's check out the um, the chaos bag here. Uh, so two up is where I want to be. Four up would be awesome if I could get to a five. Um, right now I'm tied. So two bucks of streetwise is going to get me to three up. I could just throw a perception at it and see what happens. Um, I don't... Well, if I... So if I combine Streetwise with Perception, that's pretty cool because it gets me to... F I guess the Perception does give me three extra tokens. I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I need to be skimpy or not. Um, tell you what. First action, I'm going to um, spend two resources with Streetwise. Um, so I will be at a four on one. Let's click the Chaos. Minus four. If you fail, take a horror. All right. Well, that's great. Uh, second action, we're going to spend two resources to do it again. And I get a minus two, which is going to give me one of her clues. Oh, you know what? I never um, I never populated these clues here. So that's... I got so excited. I just never did it. All right. So these clues are all... I'm going to put them on the people themselves for clarity. All right, so second action, I did succeed. And we're going to drop this clue right on down here. And then last action, I'm going to be two up with a perception. Um, do I want to actually be five up with this? Yeah, you know what? I do want to clear her. Here's why. Diane Dumaine's going to come into to town. And if I don't get this clue off of Constance... Um, like, Diane's going to spawn where the bystander is with the least amount of clues, which is currently Constance. So I, and once she's in play, you can't get clues off of the bystander at her location. So I need to get this last clue for sure. Um, so I'm going to spend uh, two resources with Streetwise. So that brings me up to a four. Perception brings me up to five. Six on one. Good thing I did, because that is a minus four, um, which is terrible. But hey, it, uh, it worked out this time, I guess. So I get the last clue, which is great. I don't have to worry about Diane anymore. I get a card from Perception. It's a flashlight that could maybe be useful. Eh, we'll see. I'm skeptical. I'm not sure if it's really going to do me much good. Uh, and that's the end of the round. So I'm going to get a card and a resource. And then at the top of the round, we advance. Already, man, we're just having a good time. The final guest. Oh, if it isn't our final guest, the doorman with stumps for hands announces, Miss Divine, you're looking snazzy. Uh, and she comes in and she's like, What's up, y'all? The party don't start till I walk in. Uh, so Diane Divine gets spawned at the location with the bystander with the fewest clues, the encounter deck. Or the counter discard pile gets shuffled back in. Um, how do I rotate that? There you go. 
So Dan's at my location. As a reminder, she's aloof. You can't gain clues while she's at your location. And at the beginning of the enemy phase, she moves to the person with the least clues on her. She's much more of a factor in multiplayer games. Uh, but when you're playing true solo, she basically doesn't do anything as long as you are smart about taking clues off of people, kind of like I just was with Constance. So, uh, I that was advancing the agenda, so now I'm going to draw my encounter card, and it's a maniac, maniac. Maniac says you take a damage when he engages you, and maniac takes a damage. So there you go. And um, this is why... It's dangerous to try to hoard a bunch of resources with a Dark Horse Preston. Uh, because if I had done that, then I could not kill this Maniac easily. I'd have to spend three actions instead of two. But uh, this round I'm only going to have to spend two actions. So, let's see. First action. Uh, I'm going to spend three resources with Fire Axe. Um, I will be at a one... Uh, Two, three, four, five, six, seven on three, right? Yes. So I will be four up. That's exactly where I want to be. Minus one. That does two damage to the maniac. Second action. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to spend one, two, three, four, or sorry, one, two, three resources. I will then be a one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven on three. Four up skulls are, I think, a redraw. And if I fail, what do, what do skulls do? Uh, reveal another token. If you fail, place a doom on a lunatic in play. Okay, well, so don't don't mess this up. Maybe uh, another skull placing two doom right now. If I fail, another skull placing three doom. If I fail, and a minus four. Well, good news. That's enough to kill a maniac. Get out of here, bro. Nobody even likes you. Uh, and then I still have an action left. Guess what, gang? I'm going to move. I'm going to move on down to the living room. Uh, it says after you perform a parlay action in the living room, draw one card once per phase. Uh, so that will be great. Uh, I'm poised to uh, uh, interview Ishimaru. By the way, we did successfully interview Constance. Um so you flip her over, and then she tells you, Oh, there was once a, a very talented Nigel. Wow, it was really great. And we're going to remember that at the end uh, to add to our campaign log. Anyway, uh, poised and ready to take on Ishimaru. Uh, it's the end of the round, so no enemies. Oh, I drew my weakness. If you remember, I mentioned at the beginning, you have to spend 10 resources to get rid of it, and if you don't, you suffer one mental trauma, and that's going to be not great for Dark Horse Preston. It's probably a leading reason why Dark Horse Preston has trouble relative to, uh, I guess, hoarding Preston, the one where you have a bunch of money. Anyway, one doom out of three, and I draw in the mythos phase, fine dining. Either place one of your clues on a bystander asset in play or take one horror and one damage. Um, so because I'm here with Ishimaru, I can investigate, sorry, parlay with her, I'll be a one on zero, and because I'll be at a zero, I feel like putting the clue on her is pretty good, because I have to draw auto fails in order to not get those clues. Um, otherwise I'd have to take the horn of damage, but I think this time I'm not going to. So, Ishimaru is going to get a third clue on her and now it is my turn so first action i'm gonna um parlay ishibaru and i'll be a one on zero because of the fine clothes so if i draw anything but the auto fail i will pass ready set Oop, get ready to find any all right first action parlay minus one that's a success and i get that clue back that i just dropped hooray for me second action Parlay, minus one. Still still doing pretty good. As a reminder, um, I did need six or more cards in hand, which I satisfy exactly, and that was one reason why I didn't play that Church Keepsake yet. 
Uh, and third action, I'm a one on zero, and I drew zero. Wasted all my good tokens on this, but I don't mind. Oh, um, you know what? Hopefully this doesn't mess up my turn too much, uh, but I did want to make use of this ability where I got a free card draw after that first success. I guess it doesn't say it has to be like the first time, so technically uh, we'll just say that I am using it on my third. And there's not a good strategy to that. All right, coup de gras. Auto damage is better than not auto damage when your stats are all wins and you're a garbage man. Okay. Uh, oh, and then Ishimaru gets interviewed. Doing pretty good. This is like round four, and I've interviewed two people. In sp I don't really get to interview her very much, actually. I feel like she usually turns pretty early for me. In speaking with Miss Ishimaru, you discover that she designed all the costumes. That stranger character, she says, mm, peculiar role. He wears all yellow. And that mask, did you know? He was doing a weird thing behind the stage once. Wow, that sounds creepy. Uh, remember that you interviewed Haruko. I will. I will remember that. Thank you very much. All right, so end of the round. Boop, boop, draw a card. Gain a resource. Ooh, Lone Wolf. I like to see that. Uh, Lone Wolf is actually going to make it a little bit easier, maybe, ideally, to get rid of uh, Lodge of Debts by the end of the game. We go up to top of the round, 2 Doom. 2 Doom is the number. We're going to draw a young psychopath. Psychopath. Um, let's see, I fight at 7s right now. I think that's right. Um, I could take the horror... I prefer not to, because horror is usually how I die. But I'm going to spend basically my entire turn fighting this person, which I don't love. Um, is it better to just take the horror? And let's see, she'll be at a five fight, and I'll be fighting at a seven. Oh, God, I don't know, man. Um, well, let's take a look at the board. What would I do this turn otherwise? Jordan Perry, I need 10 or more resources. And I'm, I'm just not there, bro. I'm just not there. I mean, I could do a setup turn where I throw down a lone wolf, a dig deep, and a cherished keepsake. Well, one of those three, I guess, if I kill this lady. Or maybe two, if I get really lucky on the first throw. Um, so... I could commit the coup de gras, and I would be instead of two up, I'd be four up. That might be worthwhile. Um, so I think my next moves are probably going to be. Oh man, I would love to interview Jordan. I really would. Is there any way we can make that happen? I mean, I got to kill this dude, and then next turn maybe if I get five resources. I'll be at like six. I have to wait two more turns. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, I think I might be better off just going after Sebastian with Dig Deep now that that's in play. So uh, the point is that I don't think there's much I would be doing this turn. So I'm just going to um, attack the... The Psychopath. Um, first action, uh, I'm going to attack. Oh, sorry. So I have to decide when I draw her or when she engages me, and I'm going to choose to give her plus three fight. Um, actually, seven on two is five up. I would get to keep the coup de gras in exchange for the horror. Oh man, I don't know. I feel like it takes so much horror in this scenario sometimes. Screw it. I'm going to I'm going to go plus 3 fight. So she's a 5. Typically, this is when you Oh. She's not a hunter. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm going to evade this girl. Yeah, so uh, she gets plus 3 fight. She's a 5 2 3 this turn. Uh, I'm going to spend all four of my family inheritance resources on Streetwise. That brings me up to a seven. 
Seven on three to evade. Do, 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 do. Elder Sign. As a reminder, his Elder Sign lets you pay two resources to auto succeed. Um, so there you have it. So she's evaded. Um, that feels very good. And I just don't think Jordan is very, very likely to, to happen this game. Um, second action, I'm definitely going to move. If I move back to the courtyard, I could possibly draw another enemy. So I'm actually going to go the long way um, towards Sebastian. And then, uh, so I'm back at the foyer. And then last action, I'm actually going to play Lone Wolf and start trying to make some of my money back. So Lone Wolf is essentially going to up my family inheritance to five per turn instead of four. Um, cool. So that's my turn. Enemy phase. Nothing happens. Uh, end of the round. Everything readies, including this young, young psychopath. Um, and then I'm going to draw up to eight cards. Another dig deep. Go up to two resources. And uh, top of the round. And it's time to trigger the terrifying truth. When this agenda would advance, instead remove all doom and play, randomly resolve one of the sickening reality cards underneath the snare reference card. So we're gonna do kind of like I did when I set up. So I'm gonna shuffle this, when I stop, I'm gonna um, pick the top card, and uh, that person is going to be our transformee. Constance! Constance Dumain! All right, so uh, good news is that um, I'm going to put her in the interviewed pile. Um, good news is that we already got all of our clues, which is cool. Um, and Constance is going to be really hard to kill. And I don't love it. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to kill her or not. Um, anyway, I'm going to decide if I'm going to fight her in a minute. I mean, I'm pretty much going to have to fight her, right? All right, well, uh, I draw my encounter card, and it is Corrosion. All right, well, that's a board wipe, friends. Oh, wait, hold on. No, it's not, because they have flashlights. Yes. Okay, discard item assets from play and your hand with a total printed resource cost of X, where X is your shroud. So I happen to be at a two-shroud location, and so I'm going to choose to discard a flashlight from my hand. What a time to be alive. That is good news. And then at the start of my turn, I gain one from Lone Wolf. And uh, so we're ready to party now. Um, all right, so I don't like the idea of moving in with Constance head-on to fight her. Um, that would move me into the courtyard, and I might draw another enemy. And I really don't like the idea of starting to be swarmed. So I think I'm just going to keep going with my mission. I don't... I think I've taken one damage so far. Uh, yeah, I've taken one damage, and then Constance is going to move in at, during the enemy phase and punch me for two, and then next turn I'm going to get three hits on her and see what kind of damage I can do. And we'll just see what happens, huh? Um, I would love it if I had maybe a dark horse, because that would get me to a fight of eight. An eight on four would be really, really good here. Um, so I could draw for Dark Horse and try to play it this turn and then move or something. Or I could just go into Sebastian. All right, so hold on. This is the living room when you parlay, you draw cards. So if I parlay in the ballroom, I actually get money, um, which would maybe only be helpful for getting rid of my lodge debts. Uh, yeah, so alternatively, I could like play dig deep try to investigate for look what I found um, and play cherish keepsake and then let her come into the foyer and then I'll fight her here and that way I'm fighting her at a pretty low shroud location which would make I guess corrosion and roaches a little, a little nicer to play with um, and then once she's dead I can try to go up to Sebastian but the thing is that the um with the ancient evils, I feel like the you only have like two rounds between baddies flipping. So I almost feel like I gotta jump on 
Sebastian now while I can. Um, and then I'll just figure it out in a minute here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, so first action, I'm going to move into the ballroom. Um, what was my encounter card that I drew? Oh, it's corrosion. That's right. All right. First action, I move into the ballroom. Oh, it's a shroud of four. That's stupid. That's stupid, and I hate it. <laughs> if I drop any clues here, I'm going to be a sad, sad boy. Um, second action, I'm going to parlay. Oh, this is a willpower parlay. I was thinking this was an intellect parlay. Well, hold on. So I need to dig deep down. So actually, you know what? I, uh, not accounting for the ballroom shroud. I knew it was higher than two, but I'm just thinking about the willpower thing. There's not a reason why I would move in there yet. Um, I think I got to get ready for a fight. So we're going to spend two resources on dig deep. I'm going to put down a uh, cherish keepsake. And uh, I'm going to try to investigate while I got the action here. I am a one on two. And I don't think I boost here, right? Because I'm going to bottom out at zero. And then I can play Look What I Found to get both clues. So yeah, um, I'm going to investigate. I'm a one on two, minus one. So I'm a zero on two. I fail. I fail by two exactly. So I'm going to play Look What I Found using two resources from my inheritance. I'm going to discover both of these clues. Look at that, guys. We're already at, we're at six clues. How great is this? Huh? Um, I didn't pick them both up, did I? Stupid. Come on. Uh, alrighty, cool. Well, that's my turn. Uh, enemy phase. Constance. Oh, enemy phase. First, Diane is going to move to the bystander asset with the fewest clues on it, which is down here. No, not my hand. Get out of here. Uh, and then Constance is going to move in and engage with me. And I take two damage, which I don't love. But here we are. Um, End of the round, um, I get a card and a resource. Ooh, coup de grace. That's all right. I'll take it. Uh, we'll go up to the top of the round in one doom, and I'm going to draw Dance of the Yellow King. I hate that. There's no lunatic enemies in play. Dance of the Yellow King. Stain Surge. Oh, she's a lunatic. That's not good. Otherwise, there's three willpower. If you fail, the nearest lunatic enemy readies moves one location at a time and engages you. Okay. I'm a one on three right now. Um, let me think about this for a second. So I can pump with Dig Deep. But I was about to put my money, my eight total resources into Fire Axe. And right now that's looking as an attack at 7, an attack at 7, and then maybe an attack at oh, 7 by committing a coup de gras probably. Depending on if she's going to be dead or not. I might just play the coup de gras instead. But in either case, it's going to take all my money. So I think I just take this 2 damage and hope that I find a Madame LeBranche this game. I think that's what i got to do. Well, hold on. If I take this 2 damage and I don't kill her this round... I uh, won't quite be dead because she'll knock out my fine clothes during the enemy phase. All right, let's just let's just give it a shot. I don't love this. Um, I'm a one on three. Show me another sign. Nope, I fail. All right, so she readies, engages me, which she's already engaged, attacks me, and I go up to five damage. All right, cool. This is my favorite. Dance of the Yellow King. Most of the time, you do nothing. Uh, good news is that I could technically just resign. Right? Uh, so we're going to attack her twice, and we're going to see how it goes. And if it doesn't go great, maybe I'll be fine. She doesn't have her tail yet, right? Oh, I could, I could evade her. This is true. Um, 
or what if I did evade her? I would evade, move, and try to parlay. What's his face? Preston or something? No, I'm Preston. Who's this guy? Sebastian. Um, so I could do that. And the next turn, I would parlay Preston or uh, parlay Sebastian again, move back here, and then resign. And I would get my eight clues. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, alternatively, if I spent the whole turn and I got reasonably lucky, uh, and I killed her, then next turn will be at two doom. I deal with whatever the encounter card is, and I move parlay parlay Sebastian, and then we spawn another big bad, and I. I would be able to get rid of Lodge Debts then. Which would be the advantage of that, I think. Alright, well... Oh, man. I don't know how I'm going to get rid of Lodge Debts. I'd have to kill Constance right now. I think that's what I'd have to do. Um, I could evade her. Yeah, because... So if I don't kill her this turn, then she's going to knock out my fine clothes, and then I'm not going to be able to get Sebastian or anything. So that's the plan. We're going to evade uh, with Streetwise. I'll be at a 1 plus 4. Or sorry, 1 plus 3. So that brings me up to 4. 4 on 1 is 3 up. I'm actually going to commit the Dig Deep to be 4 up because there's 3 minus 4s in the bag. That's the plan. Where, how do I get there? It is. All right, four up, minus two. She is evaded. Oops. Um, second action, I'm going to move up here to the ballroom. And last action, I'm going to parlay Sebastian. I start at a one on one because of fine clothes. So I'm going to go two, three, four on one. And I'll make it a five on one. Minus three. I did it. Uh, I got one of his two clues. All right, enemy phase. Let's make sure no one's doing anything. Diane's not moving. Everything's gooch. And the round, everything ready. And I draw. The man in the pallid man. All right, so he spawns in a location furthest from all investigators, which is going to be two spaces away um, from me. So it can either be the living room or the gallery. And it's not going to matter because there's no way that I'm going to get him. I'll put him in the living room for the sake of, I don't know, just hanging out. Hanging out with all these cool ladies he's like what's up ladies and they're like why don't you talk more pallet man and he just like looks at him yeah gives him the gives him the stone cold stare you know to doom to doom and i draw ancient evils yeah well what did i say guys you get two rounds on each of these and then sometimes you get threes so that brings up to three we're gonna go Shuffle, 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 shuffle. And I really hope it's not Sebastian. So I'm going to keep shuffling. And then it's this one. Yes, Jordan Perry. All right, Jordan, you will continue to be the guy that I've never uh, successfully parlayed. But you know what? 
That's okay. That's okay, Jordan Perry. I'm not going to be around this scenario much longer. Um, all right. And uh, now I draw. Nope, I already drew. Sorry, this guy. Go back. Um, Roaches. Um, I drew Ancient Evils. That's what, That was my encounter card. So, first action. Sebastian Moreau. Um, I think, so I, here's what I want to do. I'm going to parlay this dude, which is going to give me two resources. Uh, that goes, that's a card ability still, so that's still going to go on family inheritance. Second action, I'm going to take that money, and third action, I'm going to move up to Ashley. Then Con uh, Constance and Jordan can both move to the courtyard. Next turn, my move is from the dining room to the ballroom to the foyer and then resign. Now, that being said, I think at the end of the round I have to take a willpower test to not drop all my clues. Or not drop a clue, I should say. Okay, so new plan. I'm going to parlay Sebastian. I'm going to take my money. And then I'm going to hang out at the ballroom. So Jordan Perry moves to the courtyard. Constance moves up and engages me. I lose my fine clothes. I pray that I don't take any more damage. The next turn I evade move to the foyer and resign. That's that's how it's going to go. Alright, so first action. I am a one-on-one. -on -one. So I want to be four up on this test. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, crap. If next turn, if I evade, move, resign, I don't have time to play freaking Lodge Dance. I need my one of elusive to pull this off. Or just take another mental trauma. Just draw lodge debts every game. Get mental trauma every game. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that, right? Um, man, this lodge debts is really becoming quite the uh, quite the pickle here. All right. Well, let's um. Let's definitely uh, get this get this test done. All right, so I'm a one on one. Um, two, three, four, five. I'm a five on one. Skulls draw another minus three. I did it. Give me this cool clue. Um, let's just put here. Sebastian gets interviewed. Um. It says, you can tell Sebastian's a dramatic man because he's always so dramatic. Better than last year. Yes, I know. There's more than, there's so many performances, but it's even better than last year, that time that you don't remember it because we didn't do it last year. What? I interviewed Sebastian. Okay. So I did Ishimaru, Sebastian, and Constance this game. It's not bad. Not too bad. I feel real good about that. All right, so I can move and resign right now and take a second mental trauma because of my weakness. Oh, sidebar. Um, before I forget, the ballroom uh, gave me two resources. Um, so I could take these resources, and then next turn I'm poised to... Spend them all. <gasps> oh, genius. I'm a tactical genius. Nothing nothing can go wrong. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Second action, I take 
the three resources off of my inheritance. So I go up to six. Last action, rather than just hang out in the ballroom and get punched, move in to the foyer with Constance, and she engages me. Enemy face. I take a damage, and I do damage to find clothes from Constance's attack. Um, next turn, I can evade Constance, play Lodge debts, and then resign. And if something happens that doesn't let that really work out right, I just resign. It'll be totally fine. Um, also happens during the enemy phase, Jordan Perry, choker, 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 I'm a lava man, moves in here. And now these dudes are fighters, right? Okay. Uh, end of the round, I draw a card. It better be the greatest card of all time. Well, it's not a weakness, so I'm happy about that. Gain a resource. Um, go to the top. We're at one doom. And I draw Ancient Evils. I'm okay with that. I didn't want to draw an enemy because then I was not going to be able to play Lodge Debts and I just have to resign. Where where am I? There's the... There it is. Okay. Sorry, I'm zipping all over the... the all the screens. Can't keep track of all the numbers. Okay. So. Start my turn. I get five resources on Family Inheritance and I have seven in hand. So. I need to have 10 resources after this. So I'm going to spend two resources, totally off of family inheritance, I guess. I'm going to spend these two resources on Streetwise. Streetwise makes me a four on one for an evade check. If this evade gets pulled off, I have exactly 10 resources left to play Lodge Debts, and then I can resign. Drum roll, please. As a reminder, this is what my chaos bag looks like. There's, uh, I'll be at four on one, so that puts me here. And so, you know, there's odds. One, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Ten out of 14. If I had a single icon in my hand, a single evade icon, that would be useful. Here we go. Minus one! Yours! Yours! Suck it, Constance. You dumb. Go home. No one even likes you. Because yeah, you're a monster lady. You don't even have skin. you got to have skin in order to get liked. That's a, that's a human rule. Second action. I'm gonna, I spend seven resources plus the three on my inheritance dun, 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 to play Lawage Dance. Let me make sure I... Playing this right, it cost me 10. Remove Lodge Debts from the game. He spoke of bargains and of debts owed, and yet there were clearly no more, there were no mere mon monetary ob obligations. Talking about money. Alright, so this guy gets RFG'd. Get out of here. There's three across the table somewhere. Hopefully, I can find that. Uh, last action. You know what we're going to do? We're going to resign. Having found valuable information about the production, you depart and plan your next move. If each of the investors resign, proceed to if no resolution was reached in the campaign guide. Does it say that on the, the act card? Uh, yeah. I mean, it just says find as many clues as you can then get out of this awful place. But resign. I did it. I won. I won. I beat it. I beat it with eight clues. That is that's a good run. I did a couple practice rounds of this and it was hard to accomplish this. But here we go. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. Good. Look at that. Eight clues. I love it. Um, so that's going to earn us a four XP for the scenario. Uh, we also interviewed Constance, Sebastian, and Ishimaru. And so we're going to add that to our campaign log, which is hiding over over here. Where, where, what did I do with that campaign log? It's around here somewhere. I just got to find it. Oh, here's my logic dance. Let's put that back. 
uh, anyway, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm curious to know what you think about Dark Horse Preston. Um, I don't know if he is... If Dark Horse Preston is the best version of Preston or the best version of Dark Horse. Um, I think it's nice. Uh, I mentioned it in the last video, I think, but Madame LaBranche is not, like, amazing because her money just goes to your... Uh, what's it called? Your family inheritance. So, really, I think just Peter Sylvester would have been better. And then I wouldn't be so vulnerable to horror. So, instead of the keepsakes, I probably would have put a rabbit's foot. And that would have been really nice, I think. Um, but, uh, here we are. So, I'm going to... Um, I think I have 6 XP to spend. If I'm right, I'm going to buy two Lola Santiago's. And replace the Madame LaBranches. So... Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, next time when I play Echoes of the Past. Oh, ooh, very, ooh, very spooky. Yes. Mm -hmm.